This video won't go viral, and when I say viral, I don't even mean millions or hundreds of thousands of views. Anything over a thousand views is viral for a small channel like mine. So I'm saying this video probably won't even get a thousand views. I could be wrong, but let me tell you why I think it won't. So I actually had a viral video I made three months ago that got 200,000 views, but that video was so radically different from my usual content and my YouTuber friends immediately knew it would go viral. The title was provocative, the thumbnail was a perfect compliment to that, and the content itself was enraging and inflammatory to most viewers. Which brings me to my point. Viral videos usually have a provocative title, they spark curiosity, or they talk about trending things or celebrities, or sometimes they do all of that at once. I don't know if you've seen this guy since last month in July, but he's absolutely exploded. And my YouTuber friends, we all have completely different feeds. We've all been suggested this video multiple times. YouTube kept feeding it to us, even though we ignored it at first. You could say his thumbnail is shit because it's a screenshot of a talking head and the intro is no hook at all. Hi, I'm Gooby from Gooby and Doobie. But the title is brilliant because he has credibility saying that he's an MIT educated neurosurgeon, which is super rare. And it sparks curiosity because he's now unemployed and in the mountains. Why is the question, right? It's a compelling title and I actually thoroughly enjoyed the video. But my point is, he's not an average Joe. He's got an edge. He's got an unfair advantage. He's got a lot of stories and experience from being a surgeon and seeing patients. Almost all big YouTubers I've seen have an unfair advantage. Maybe it's amazing cinematography. Maybe it's absurd humor. So I dressed for a goddamn apocalypse. I looked like an NPC out of Fallout. Hey. hey. Maybe it's an absolutely massive physique or a personality that a lot of people love or maybe it's engaging shot selection or editing or combinations of the above. And so I ask myself, what is my unfair advantage? And honestly, I can't come up with a single solid answer. I've studied electrical engineering, but I have hardly worked as an engineer. I'm not that guy who quit his corporate job to become a YouTuber full time more of an unemployed 33-year-old living with his mom who is trying to make his high school dream come true of making a living being a YouTuber. I don't have any particularly special skill. My editing is super basic. I'm not a treasure trove full of interesting stories because other than some literal craziness that happened in my 20s, my life is quite boring and I actually like it that way. My catchphrase at the end of my videos is usually 1% better every day, baby. Indicating my general goal of incremental improvement. And that's the overarching theme of my videos, but I don't think I have any real unfair advantage at all. If I had to pick a couple, I'd say I enjoy making videos for the most part, including the very basic editing I do. And I've been told multiple times from different people that I come across as authentic. But can you really make it on YouTube just because you don't seem fake when you talk and you like making videos? Is that enough without any other unfair advantage? One tip I heard is that to become a successful YouTuber, you have to have a strong why. Why do you want to be a YouTuber other than to make money? Is it because you want to share your journey as you learn a skill? share some experience that you believe will help people's lives. My reason seems more trite than I'd like. I've enjoyed making videos since I was a teenager, so I want to keep making videos and make a living out of it. Ideally, videos that impact and inspire others. Whenever I get a comment saying they've changed some aspect of their life for the better because of my video, that's probably the most rewarding feeling I've gotten on my YouTube journey so far. And that's why I didn't double down on my viral video going down the route of talking trash about South Korea, even though there was clearly a demand for it. Since I speak and understand Korean, I can show and comment on different Korean media like I did with my viral video. 
But I don't want to be spreading negativity, nor do I really care about pop culture. Speaking of virality, I don't think it's the best thing to chase. Yes, that one video got me from 1,000 to 2,000 subs in a matter of days and got me monetized by reaching 4,000 watch hours requirement, but most of those extra 1,000 subs that I got are not interested in my usual self-development videos and most of them are ghost subscribers and that they subscribe to me but will never watch another one of my future videos ever again. Virality is not the best thing. Even Marquez Brownlee said it himself. And even my channel, sometimes I'll say like the best thing that never happened to me was having an early video go viral. Really, yes, really glad totally. that didn't happen to me mm -hmm. because then you start chasing that, you start trying to repeat that. We've all seen it happen. And you might be saying, Paul, you know what you're doing. This video title stokes curiosity. And yeah, you're absolutely right. When this title popped in my head last night as I was trying to fall asleep, I thought it was a clickbaity title. The reason I'm not confident in this video exploding is because of my experience. It would be cool if I was wrong, but it's kind of rare for my videos to get past 1,000 views. So statistically speaking, I'm pretty sure it won't go viral. Plus I hardly put any effort into the thumbnail. Fuck thumbnails, man. I really hate making thumbnails. In my ideal world, I would just use YouTube's automatically generated screenshot thumbnails for every single video. I am a lazy YouTuber. Having said all that, I want to end on a positive note about my YouTube trajectory and perhaps yours too if you are a YouTuber. While I am doubtful for having any competitive edge myself, some unfair advantage that I can leverage, I still think that I'm on the right track and I especially feel that way when I hear things like this. If you make videos for 10 years, hopefully it doesn't take that long, but let's just say hypothetically, if you make videos for 10 years and every single video you're learning new things, you're implementing new strategies to improve your content, there's no way that you're not going to succeed. If you make videos for 10 years and improve every single time you upload, success is inevitable. The biggest risk that you've got is to stop doing the thing. Whereas if you can just do a thing for like a very long time, there's basically no world in which you're not gonna succeed at doing the thing. I remember there was a great interview that I watched. Um, MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, the tech YouTuber, did an interview for Y Combinator. And they asked, you know, what's the secret to your success and longevity on YouTube and stuff? What would you attribute your success to on YouTube? And he said, well, if you just do something for 10 years, then you're probably gonna succeed at it. Like pick something and then just do it for 10 years. The channel itself, I mean, there's plenty of other successful tech channels, but it has its own unique style. It has a consistent voice. It's been me for 10 years. Yeah. Um, so I guess just if you combine all those factors, consistency plus tech staying interesting, that's, that's mainly it. It's a great idea. <laughs> um, there was this other talk I, I was watching from some guy who was giving a talk at, I think, Stanford Business School, and he's like this big shot investor. And his advice for living a asymmetrical life or a kind of, you know, living life on your own terms is to find something you enjoy and just do it for decades. And if you just find something you enjoy and do it for decades, there's literally no world in which you're not gonna be successful at the thing, depending on how you define success at the thing. And yes, I do wanna make videos for decades. It's been two decades since that desire started when I was a teenager and it hasn't gone away until now. So I hope that desire continues to burn for decades more into the future. So here's to making videos for decades and to incremental improvement. 1% better every day, baby.